Good evening for those who are following us live. This is going to be the second leg of the Spanish Pilot Skills Tour and we are flying from sunny San Sebastian to the airport of Vigo. And without any further ado, I will jump into the flight deck and start setting up the plane. I've already loaded 5.3 tons of fuel as required by Simbrief. We are going to be flying at flight level 330. And the goal of today's flight is flying the VOR approach to runway 19er in the, the airport of Vigo, which is a really nice approach. We'll debrief that when we are in the air. But let's start by going through the checklist and setting up the plane. Thanks for everybody who is watching live. And I hope for those who will be watching afterwards, it will be still a nice and interesting video about this approach. All right. So we first check if the engine master switches are off. It's checked. The engine mode selector is normal. Landing gear lever is down. The battery voltages are above 25 and a half volt. So we put both batteries to auto. And then we have power. Then we set the dome light to bright because it's daylight. We check the parking brake is on. It's on. And the big brake pressures are nominal. So that's good. And then, since external power is available, we put that on and everything comes alive. Then while the systems initialize, we set the brightness of our screens. So far there is no ATC coverage for the flight, unfortunately again. So that's not going to be something that's happening today, seem it seems. Right, now we can check that the flap position matches what's displayed on the screen, that's checked. And that the speed brake lever is retracted. Okay, then we go to the overhead panel. We check that the probe and the window heat is on auto, the air conditioning panel has all the lights off. Indeed, the cross bleed is on auto. We test the annunciator lights. Everything seems to be operational. Okay. We leave them on bright because it's daytime. This is normal that we have the fault lights on the electric, electric panel. And then for the ventilation panel, we should also have all the lights off. And that's indeed the case, good. Then we will set the ADRUs on NAV one by one. Always waiting till there is confirmation that they are working from battery power to Then the strobe lights go on auto, navigation logo lights go on one or two, today we will put them on two, seatbelt sign goes on, no smoking signs goes on auto, and the emergency exit lights go on armed. We confirm landing elevation is on auto, and the pack flows we can leave on normal, and we set all our fuel pumps on. Alright, then we check that all our push buttons here are guarded. And then we check the fire tests. And the APU fire test. These all work. Then we set the radio panels on. Also down here. And that's it for this part. We quickly check the ATIS. There is no ATIS frequency here, so we'll just look what's in the uh, X-plane. QNH is 1012 and there is wind 2404 knots. So we'll take off from runway 22. And QNH was 1012, 1012 on 
both sides and on the backup. Okay, then we can set up our flight computer. And we start by confirming that it's the correct aircraft and we have used we are using the current data cycle, RX cycle. And then we can have a look at our position and then set up the init A page. We are flying from San Sebastian, Lima, Echo, Sierra, Oscar to Vigo, Lima, Echo, Victor, X-Ray. Our alternate route is to Porto, which is Lima, Papa, Papa, Romeo. Lima, Papa, Papa, Romeo, correct. Our flight number is Iberia. 285 Our position is 43214 43214 1475 1475 Our cost index today is 5 The very low cost index and our cru cruise altitude is flight level 330 And we can align our IRS Good Then we can go to setting up the flight plan. We take off from runway 22 and our departure is Bravo Lima Victor 1 Alpha. Bravo Lima Victor 1 Alpha and there is no transition. Flight plan inserted. We don't need this anymore and we put this into plan mode to be able to see what's happening. Alright, insert. And then from Bravo Lima Victor we do airways. And first airways, uniform mic 190. Uniform mic 190. Then we go to Romeo 42. Romeo 42 via Sierra Sierra November. Oh, uniform mic 190, uniform mic 190, Romeo 42, Sierra Sierra November. That's a bit strange. It should be Sierra November Romeo. Let's Sierra November Romeo. Let's try it again. Ah. I hope that um that might not have been the correct waypoint because we have no position yet. I'm not sure. Let's have a look at the maps. Departure. And it was the... What was our departure again? An alpha. Okay, that seems to be correct. Indeed, it's much further. Okay, so that is correct. Then, airways, and then do the route again. Uniform mic 190 to Sierra November Romeo. And then Romeo 42. To Roxer. Romeo, Oscar, X ray, Echo, and Romeo. Roxer. And that's it. Have a quick look. Zoom out. That is indeed how it looks on the plan. And then. 
from the Roxer, we do the Roxer to Lima arrival. I'm oh, sorry, return with our arrival. We'll do the VR approach to runway 19er, and our arrival is the Roxer to Lima. And no vias. Ah, yeah, that's for the VR approach. We'll not do a via, we will do via vehicle. If I remember correctly, a quick look. Approach. Because we come from here, so we don't have to go via Birmi, but we'll go via Vigo. And that's going to be our initial approach fixed. You can see that it's possible to have the initial approach at Birmi or at Vigo, or I think even further at Pivon indeed. So those are the options. We do Vigo. And no transition and approve and then we quickly scroll through our flight plan to see everything is okay indeed everything is okay except of course the VR approach is not correctly in the database so we will do that anyway manually that's that's why it's nice that's why it's the pilot skill tour we are not going to do too much automation only the necessary amount to help us but we will do what's possible manually via the, the flight computer controls and then at the end of course land manually okay let's come back to san sebastian and in any case prepare our charts in order so first of course we need the airport chart to know where we need to taxi out then the next chart is the departure chart which was the one alpha Indeed, we will come here to Bravo Lima Victor, Bilbao. And then we will need the charts for San Sebastian. Oops, sorry. Uh, the charge for San Sebastian. Indeed. And in the order of, sorry, arrival. And we come via... Oops. Via... The Roxa to Lima. This one. We'll be coming from Roxa and come to Vigo. And then we will need the approach chart, which is the VOR chart, runway 19. And then at the end we will need again the airport chart to know where we need to taxi. But, and we can also put there the position charts to know which position we need to park if there is ATC at the end. Okay, so all the charts are prepared in order. The flight plan is completed. Uh, not yet. So the flight plan is completed till the alternate, but we'll also input the alternate flight plan which we don't expect to use in any case because for the pilot skill tour I really need to land in Vigo and the weather seems to be fine but just to have a complete setup we'll also do that so back to the flight plan and our uh, alternate flight plan is very easy we go from runway 22 uh, sorry 19er and there is no seat, we are doing a direct departure. We will be going to Turon. And then we go directly to runway 35 to Ernav arrival. And there is no star. And I will have a quick look. If we need a via. To 
approach. Ernav 35 er And indeed the via Akulu that seems to be a good choice to do. And let's clear the discontinuity and then let's see how that proceeds. It's quite steep turn at the end. But anyway, we would probably be vectored to the start. Okay, flight plan is ready, we are in plan mode, we are zoomed in. So we can proceed further. And the next step, we are not going to make a secondary flight plan because there is no ATC, so we don't expect any sudden changes in runway departure. Then we go to the init B page and put in our zero fuel weight and the center of gravity position which is 56.8 tons, 56 decimal 8 slash 29 to decimal 3 percent, 56 decimal 8, 56 decimal 8 to niner decimal 3 to niner decimal 3 and our fuel is 5.3 tons. And the extra time is then 20 minutes after the alternate. That's sufficient because the weather in Porto in any case is good and it's not a busy approach so we don't expect much holding. Okay, then we just quickly go back to the flight plan and give in the winds for better predictions. So we take one point before the top of the climb and then we go access wind data and in the tallest you can just automatically request one. And then for the cruise you have to do that manually but we can have a look at our flight plan and go to the page of winds which is here, wind information and then we will take the top of the climb winds at 330 which is 152 037 at flight level 330. Good, this is done. And then we can have a quick look at the fuel production is now 24 minutes, so it improved a bit. Good. Our frequencies are fine for now, so we don't have to set the Rednev page. We'll do that later on for the approach. Init B is set, and then the last thing to do is the performance page. Our takeoff speed calculations, we are going to be doing a one flap takeoff with flex thrust. Uh, maybe we'll do toga thrust for the fun of it and because in the scenery there is a bit of trees at the end of the runway and I don't want to hit those. So we'll do toga, V1 is 128, V rotation speed is 134. 134 and then V2 is 138. 138. The transition altitude is. The transition altitude is 6000 feet. That's there, correct. Flaps is 1 slash 0. Sorry, down 0, 0.0. We don't have to set any trim. And there is no flex temp because we are doing toga thrust. So the takeoff data is set. Uh, the barrow is set, QNH 1012. Flight directors are on. The LS scales are not needed. Uh, constraints we put on. We are in nav arch setting. We are in manage speed and heading. ATC clearance is not going to be ATC clearance because there is no ATC. So we already set our top of the climb altitude is flight level 330. Loudspeaker volumes are fine. Timers are reset. Switching panels all in the normal position. All in normal. Transponder code is 2000. We set it on. 
system one and for takeoff we'll set it to mode above so we can see better planes above us and for takeoff in the flying pilot side we have the takeoff performance and on the non-flying or monitoring pilot side we have the flight plan so this is complete we can start our apu we wait till flap open comes up and then we'll start the APU itself. A quick look at WebEye. In the meantime, there is still no ATC. And I'm still the only person flying from San Sebastian. And also the only person flying to Vigo. So we are not really going to say anything about our intentions on Unicom either. Because there is no point. But I will still say what we would say if there would be people flying on the same route or in the same airport. So flaps are open, we can start the APU, we can have a look from outside. Alright, you can see that the exhaust gas started coming out. It's being blown a bit back and behind by the wind. Alright. We wait till APU is available. It's nicely spooling up. APU is available, so now we can put the external power off. And we can switch on the APU bleed and put a bit more cooling because by now the cabin is probably quite hot. So 27 degrees outside. So the cabin is already 34 degrees. Passengers boarding wouldn't be happy with that. So we are quickly going to cool that down. And then we can do our pushback. So the beacon lights go on. Do not forget that before we start our engines and we actually don't need a pushback because we'll just taxi out do a backtrack on runway 20, runway 22 and then take off so we don't need a pushback so we can start our engines then engine mode selector goes to ignition start and starting engine 2 and then we monitor how our engine is spooling up Engine 2 is on the right side. We can see it slowly start moving. N2 is rising. Exhaust gas temperature is rising. N1 is also rising. Fuel flow is rising. And then when this stabilizes and the engine power becomes available, then we will start engine number 1, 2. It should be stabilizing around 60-ish percent N2 and 20-ish percent N1. Alright, engine 2 is available, power is stable. Then starting engine 1. N2 is rising. Exhaust gas temperature. Slowly. Okay, exhaust gas temperature rising. Fuel flow started. N1 is rising. You can see that while we, starting, we are starting the engines, there is no air conditioning available. And engine number one is also available and stable. So we can turn back the mode selector to normal. And you can see that air conditioning is again blowing cold air, so that's very nice for the passengers because it's still warm in the cabin. And after engine start, we can put the APU bleed off. The ground spoilers go armed. 
Red Earth Dream is reset to zero, flaps are to take off position, and that's flap one. Pitch Dream is zero in our settings, you can check it once more. One, flaps one, and the trim is zero. That's just a reminder in the flight computer. We will not need anti-ice because the clouds are not too high and the temperature is high. So we don't expect the uh, icing conditions through those clouds. The APU master switch can go off. And we check that all our doors are armed. Check. All our doors are armed. So now we can do our taxi. And now we would say an Unicom that San Sebastian traffic uh, Iberia 2185 taxi to runway 22 backtracking active runway but since there is nobody else flying here or aiming to land I just checked again on whereby we don't have to write anything okay then taxi lights and we can start rolling so the brakes go off Oui. And we are rolling. And first we will taxi out to the runway and we will do our flight control checks there. But a brake check first. Alright, brakes are available. The elapsed time counter started, brake check is performed. And we'll check our flight controls just when we are on the runway. Again, welcome for those who are watching live. Feel free to ask questions. Of course, not a ri real Airbus pilot, so I'm not sure I can answer them all. But I've been flying the Tolis quite a lot, so I'm sure I can help if there are questions. Alright, quick look out to the runway. The approach path is clear. Again, there is no ATC, so I'm just given us the clearance to enter the active runway. And backtracking runway 2-2. And when we have lined up with the center line for the backtrack, I will do a flight control check. Alright, so for the flight control check, we go to flight controls. And first, the ailerons full left, full right, neutral, the elevator aft, forward and neutral. And then the rudder while disconnecting the front wheel steering is also moving full deflection left and right so this is passed flight control check passed auto brake max for takeoff we tell the cabin to prepare for takeoff and the takeoff config button checked everything is green we are ready for departure transponder is going to TA array and while entering the runway, I should have already done that. Also, all the lights while entering the runway, except for the landing lights, those are only when you are clear for takeoff. And the strobe lights also out on, on, not on auto, but on. And climb and nav mode is armed, so we are really ready. Now nicely aligned with runway 2-2. Confirm it's 2-2, that's the correct runway, we'll also confirm the heading. We go to arc mode and we put the terrain radar on because there is quite some terrain here, although the visibility is very good, so we don't expect any issues, but for safety that goes on. Oops. Alright, nicely aligned, but don't go too much further because it's not a long runway. Okay, aligned. We are pointing to 2 2, so runway 2 2 confirmed. We are cleared for takeoff because there is no ATC, so I'm clearing ourselves for takeoff. 
but since there is quite some traffic I will announce that on Unicom. So we are Unicom Sierra Oscar traffic. Take off runway to two departure departure is the BLV one alpha Bravo Lima Victor one alpha alpha climb flight level three three zero send and everything is set armed max lapse position okay take off chrono is started first we go to 50% engine power I'm holding the brakes because it's a short runway I will only let them go when we are at toga power is stable toga brakes all right keeping the center line with the rudder bit of pressure on the stick until we reach 80 knots 80 knots, pressure is released from the stick 100 knots and 20 V1 rotate positive rate gear up autopilot engaged clean up the lights Gear is up, autopilot active, and soon we will be at thrust reduction altitude when we will have to set back our thrust to climb. Now we have to go back to climb, and this is the climb detent. And now in climb mode, which is basically auto throttle, the nose is lowered by the autopilot, we start gaining speed. And we are nicely following our track. Zoom out a bit on the plan. Be more. And when we reach S speed, we can retract the flaps. Alright, flaps retracted and the speed brakes was already disarmed when we pulled up the wheels. Alright, transition altitude is 6000 feet, so when we are at 6000, crossing 6000, I will go to standard barrow. And we can turn right above 3600 at 5 from the SSN Sierra Sierra November War we have intercepted the radial 243 now you can see here that the track is at 243 now the track so the track is the green diamond our heading is yellow and the track so that's where our plane is actually flying because of the wind it's the green diamond and that's at the other end of the viewer and now we have passed the altitude we have reached the 5 distance so now we make our turn to the right and then intercept the VR 271 track for the rest of the departure we have crossed the transition altitude so we set our pressures to standard 1013 and everything is looking good on our system so far no white lights next action item is at 10,000 feet uh, sorry at flight level 100 when we will turn off the landing lights and also let the passengers walk around so turn off the seatbelt signs all right coming up to light level 100 okay 
then the lights are off and retracted. And the seatbelt signs are off. Good. And we can zoom out much further. We are going to be flying over the north coast of Spain, it's a really scenic area. But there are some thunderstorms developing. So we'll see if there is any bumpy turbulence on the way. But for Vigo the weather should be fine so far. We need to have another look if there is ATC, there is no ATC. We are still the only inbound flight to Vigo. There is a departing flight too. And also for the network we should put on our DCAS. Okay. And we can clear up the maps we don't need anymore from me. The departure is going to be fine. And then maybe we can slowly debrief the approach we'll be flying. Maybe I can wait till we reach cruising altitude. So the voice of the engines is less disturbing for that discussion. Can have a look outside, it's very nice. And here is the sea. No traffic. All the parameters are looking good. I have uh, enabled holes in the Tolis settings, but they are only set to the occurrence rate, which matches the real life occurrence rate. We are not expecting to have any malfunctions, but they might in any case happen but only as often as they happen real life in an Airbus A319. We are flying the Airbus A319, so this is except for the A318, the shortest version, shorter than the A320 and the A321. We are going to be quite light when landing, but not overly right. Because we are flying with 130 passengers and 2 tons of cargo, and 2 tons of cargo is already something in an airplane like this. So it's gonna be a normal landing weight, but the runway in uh, Vigo is quite okay, not too short. So there, only the approach is a bit more of a challenge, the VOR approach. Our climb rate is not very phenomenal because of the cost index of 5, so the lower the cost index, the more economical the flight is going to be, so the slower and the 
more fuel efficient, but the more fuel efficient, the more slow you are. The low cost index is less money, but more time. And high cost index is more expenses, but you get a shorter flight. These cost indexes are route and company dependent. I have no idea what Iberia would use. I have just used the value given by Simbrief. There is not much to do in flight in an Airbus if things are going well. So that's why I'm just waiting a bit, stalling here before I start explaining the approach. Hi James, uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. We are still uh, more than 40 miles out from our top of the climb. Then the engines will take the power back, the cruise power, and then there is going to be a bit less noise in the cockpit. So I'm waiting for that before explaining how our approach is going to be for this flight to Vigo or the Spanish Pilot Skill Tour, the second leg of the Spanish Pilot Skill Tour. In the meantime, very nice landscape thanks to Spain UHD scenery. It's a quite easily accessible Orto scenery, also overlays, not just Orto. So for the whole of Spain I have that, that's why I've been flying a lot in Spain. It's very nice scenery. Last year I've done the IFR tour and the VFR tour also in Spain. So this year I decided to do the pilot skills tour. We are flying just above the north coast of Spain. You can see here on the radar. It's actually the coastline. This is the sea and here is Terran below us. I go a bit to the front. You can see it's a really, really nice coastline. Hi Steph, also welcome to the stream. Thank you for joining. It's also not a long flight. The total flight time is under one hour. So when things start happening, they will be going fast. Our expected arrival time is uh, half past seven, mm, half past eight in Belgian time, also in Spanish time, half past eight. It's going to be a bit longer because I have not programmed into the flight computer the exact approach. And you will see when I start explaining it that the exact approach is a bit longer than a direct route from the initial approach fix would be, but I expect that that's going to be an extra 5 to 6 minutes, so touchdown expected around 8.35ish local time. So that's less than an hour from now. There are again any questions by those who are watching, feel free to ask them in the chat. Because now before Oh there is a Woo. Haha. <laughs> Jet Airfly 083 is to flying to La Palma. Somebody who is usually flying with us. Now, if I can figure out how to reply to a private message... <laughs> I've never really used private messages in IVO. I'm going to quickly look up how I reply. Message dot message call sign and message it says so private message uh, 
Ah, this one yeah. Dot message. Oops. Message. Call sign is beauty zero eight three and then our message. Question is if I have to put those in brackets or not. We'll try. I think that broke out. I hope. Alright, back to our flight. Almost on the cruising level. Ah, thanks Hank. Oh, it worked out because I got uh, a well-received reply. And Steph has started with the Tolis A321. The A321, I really like that too. After I bought that when it came out, I have barely flown with the A319 anymore because I actually like more the, the shape of the airplane. I think visually it's a nicer plane. But it's definitely true that I think it's easier to fly the A319 manually. The landing is a bit, for me, more intuitive. With the A321 the flare is much more flat there, you don't pull up the nose that much. And I'm having issues there sometimes not floating the plane. So for the pilot skill tour where sometimes, quite often, you have short runways, then I think the A319 is more suited. Actually, also for this Spanish tour, these stages, the, Mac, the 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 largest plane you're allowed to use is the A320 or a, uh, a B738, the 737 800. That's why I'm using the A319 because I always fly Airbus. I don't. I have no idea how to fly with a Boeing. I will admit that. So this is why I'm flying the A319 for this tour even though I like the A321 visually better. Alright, we are just reaching our cruise altitude. We can see the Alt Star is the mode change and now we are in cruise altitude hold mode. You can hear as the engines are spooling back to cruise power. Very good. And we can talk about our approach. And I hope uh, the engine voice is not too loud so you can all hear me. So let's see how our approach is going to go. We have 130, 140 almost miles till the top of descent, so we have some time to go over the approach itself. I'm just going to, uh, maybe I will just open up the screen better. If I just put it here and make the screen larger. So this is the VOR approach to Vigo, Limaco, Victor X-Ray. And how are we going to do this? So there are three options. Thanks, thanks for the feedback on the sound. So there are three options to start the approach. First of all, what's a VOR approach? A VOR approach means that you are using a VOR for navigation and during the whole approach there is no no glide slope, so there is no radio guidance for the glide slope itself, like in the ILS, but there is some kind of a guidance for the direction you have to be flying the approach and that's done by the VOR. So you are flying along a radial of the VOR and with the, the airplane you can really follow a selected direction relative to the VOR beacon. So now here there are three options to start the approach and that means there are three initial approach fixes. They are called IAF, so those are the initial approach fixes. And you can start this approach, this particular approach at the Birni, at the Pivon, which is more to the north. It's not visible on this chart anymore, but it's really an extension basically almost of the center line. And you can also start the approach above the VOR, it, the VOR itself. So Vigo, the Vigo VOR is itself an initial approach fix. We are going to be coming from this direction. I can show the approach chart. So our approach is from Roxar. So we are going to be coming like at a 45 degree angle to Vigo. So the end of our arrival is at Vigo. 
it's not at Pivon, not at the Birmi, so if you would be doing an approach from Barco or from uh, Sierra Tango, so from Santiago, then we could take those two other initial approach fixes, so Pivon or Birmi, but we are not coming from there, so we'll do the whole arrival to Vigo and then from Vigo to the approach. And then how the approach itself works is so we are arriving from this direction, so from 45 degree angle, more or less, and we are just going to fly direct to Vigo. Now in Vigo, we'll enter this racetrack, so it's basically an extended hold, let's see, let's see, and we'll fly this racetrack, so we'll have to first fly out, and then fly in, and when we fly in, then we will have to fly along a given radial of the VOR, so it's going to be the inbound 194 degree track to the VOR, so we will have to fly along that hundred that uh, uh, radial of the VOR, which points to the 194 degree direction. So it's a bit it's almost southwards. There's a bit difference, but it's almost southwards. So after we do one race track, then we can proceed from the Vigo VOR to the airport. And there is a small change in the track or the heading there, so the track inbound to the VOR is 194 degrees and then from there it's 195 and it's actually not aligned with the runway because the runway also points to uh, 194 degrees. So there is a 1 degree misalignment but there visually as soon as we see the runway, runway we can line up with the center line and we can land. So that's not going to be an issue if the weather is not bad. So this was the lateral, sorry, the lateral uh, description of the approach. So we come in from here, from 45 degree angle. We don't have to do the DME arch because it's only if you use the Birmi uh, point as the initial approach fix. So we will directly fly to Vigo, then do the racetrack, come back along the 194 degree VOR, uh, sorry, uh, radial of the VOR, and then after passing the VOR, we'll continue with the track of 195. Okay, so this is how the horizontal situation is. How is the vertical situation? The vertical situation means that we have to be at the Vigo VOR at 5000 feet. Now there is a bit of discrepancy because I actually checked the real life chart and it says you have to be there at 4900 feet. Nobody is going to say anything about that. We will be at 5000 feet. These are charts from uh, Navigraph. They are not always exactly like the real life charts. They are more or less the same. But that's also a reason why they say only for flight simulation. So they are mostly the same as real life procedures. There can be some slight differences. But okay, so we arrive to Vigo VOR at 5000 feet. And that's also in accordance with our arrival procedure because it says that after the, the 10, uh, 10 mile radius from the VOR, we have to be above 4,500 feet, so being at 5,000 is perfectly fine. Okay, go back to the approach chart. So we enter our racetrack at 5,000 feet and we will have to descend to 3,900 feet by the turning point, so by the, the 7.0 mile distance from the VOR. So also you can see that the turning point itself is also set by the VOR. The VOR doesn't only tell you the, the direction by the radials, but also tells you how far you are from the VOR by the radio signals. So you can really read it off your instruments that your distance is a given amount of miles. So when we are at 7 miles, we will make the turn. Also when we are flying outbound, we'll use the reverse track of 194, so 194 minus 180 degrees is 14 degrees, so we have to fly a 14 degree track. Now track is important here, because we will not have to fly a 14 degree heading, we will have to fly a 14 degree track, which means that if there is wind from the right, our heading is going to be higher than 14 degrees, because we have to correct for the wind. Now with an Airbus it's really nice, because you can actually set the autopilot to track mode and then you can directly give in the track and not do headings and wind corrections. So this is really nice with an Airbus. Okay, so from 5000 feet above Vigo we descend to 3900 feet 
by the turn and then after the turn is done we can descend first to 3600 feet and then when we pass the 6.2 uh, mile distance from the VOR then we can descend further to 2500 feet we keep the 2500 feet until we reach the VOR and then from there on it's basically descending to runway there is no glide slope but we know what kind of uh, slope is there on the descent and in the Airbus again we can directly give in this slope so I will be flying the Airbus in a track FPA mode which means track flight path angle and there you can give in the track which direction you want to follow with the flying with the flight and also the flight path angle so if you want to descend you don't per se have to say you want to descend with 800 feet per minute or 900 feet per minute where you can here calculate from your ground speed what uh, feet per minute descent uh, matches the descent angle of 3.26 degrees but I can directly say I want to follow a descent angle of 3.3 or 3.2 degrees we cannot set exactly 3.26 so we will just do 3.3 and then when we are visual with the runway we will manually take over and correct but this is much more convenient because the plane will uh, st stick to that flight path angle no matter what our speed is one more important thing I've tried flying this approach yesterday just to be a bit prepared and I am the first approach during the 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 racetrack I did not uh, prepare fully for the approach which means I didn't put flaps out I didn't put the gears out because there is still a lot of distance here to do it but actually with such a light plane or not so light plane but I had not enough time to configure for landing so I actually had to do a go around to the approach all over again so we will already configure on the outward track make sure that we are fully configured for landing by the time we start flying inwards which means we'll have our speed set everything will be done we will not have to worry about the speeds anymore all right we are 72 miles from the top of descent so soon it's going to be time to prepare the flight computer for the descent but before we do that i will quickly show in plan mode here that uh, and I, here i have to select I will close this, I have to select the flight plan and then I can go further, zoom in and then you can see that actually I have not programmed this VOR approach in so from the Vigo it would go straight and that's not how it's going to happen so we'll switch modes and you will see ah yeah, so the question from Hank how do you program the racetrack 014? you could program that and you could program that by programming programming I, I will actually show it quickly if we have still time I will show it so that racetrack would be from Vigo so here there is actually this right hold in Vigo for some reason doesn't draw it but maybe it's a weird thing that it doesn't draw it so the right hold is there but how I would do it anyway I will do it uh, I would, sorry, return, I would put a hold at Vigo and the inbound track of the hold would be 194 and it would be a right hand okay and the time would be a one and a half minute uh, no it's a three and a half minute I think, no it's a three minute on the, the actual chart you can see that it's a, a three minute race track and then you could say time is three minutes and then it's a bit weird that it uh, is not drawing it but normally that's how you would put basically this racetrack is just a hold so then you make a hold and then you fly the hold but in the hold you have to change your altitude but that's that's no issue but you will see that we will use a different method which is much more manual which doesn't need the flight computer and which is much closer to how VOR approaches for were flown before it was available all these flight computers and so so I will just fly it as if it was a, a smaller plane with a simple VOR instrument and then you will see how how the logic works you could really program this with a hold 
I think it's actually programmed in because there is a hold, a right hand hold here at Vigo. For some reason it's not drawn in the flight computer, I'm not sure why. And yes, indeed, and then you would just activate the hold. You would activate the hold and then fly it in the tank. Now we have to enter the destination data. Uh, but I will do a quick change here. I will want to arrive to Vigo at 5000 feet. Because that was not set here. So here, first time you arrive to Vigo, I would like to be at 5000 feet. And that's normal that it says Alt Error. It recalculates things and then you see it's at 5000 and this has to go back to arc mode and then we can see that we are still 40 miles from top of descent so I will put this to performance 37 miles from top of descent and then we have to put in the arrival data in performance we go to approach and the toll is, is nice enough to tell us what are the properties what are the weather conditions at uh, Vigo? But we can also just here go back and make a refresh and then check if it's more or less the same, more or less the same. But I will take what's actually said by explain because I'm flying with explain weather. So that will match in the same anyway. So it's QNH 1012, 1012. The temperature in Vigo is a very nice 24 degrees. I would be so happy it was 25 degrees here too in Belgium I'm really boiling <laughs> the wind is 260 11 knots it's an ex ex exact crosswind so it's not gonna be an easy landing because the runway is at 19 or 0 okay it's not an exact crosswind but almost so it's like 10 knots of crosswind so the wind is 260 direction 11 knots and our decision height for the approach is you can find that here so the decision height for a category c airplane we are a category c airplane is for all categories 1800 feet above sea level and since the airport is at 829 feet it's basically 1000 feet above the airport elevation. I will leave this up because we will have to look a lot to the charts because it's quite a complex approach but now the approach is set. One more thing which people usually do that here you can give the distance to the runway so you can have the GPS calculate your distance always to the runway this is just like a fallback option to so know if your VOR instrument dies then uh, then uh, you can still have an idea how far you are. Okay, so we will see, say here, uh, Lima Echo Victor X-ray runway 19er. And you can see that we are 120 miles from the runway itself. So while the top of descent is already below 20, the runway is still much further. This is really just a check. We are not using this. We are not using the, the GPS to navigate either. But this is a safety check you can do. Okay, and maybe one thing we can still do before we start our descent. Uh, how much time we have? 60 miles. Okay, I will start the descent and then I will still show one thing you can still do. So our initial descent will be to 5000 feet, so we can already dial that in. And we can also say on Unicom that oops caps lock Lima echo victor x-ray traffic top of descent at flight level 330 at at flight level 330 uh, expecting what's our arrival expecting uh, a roxer to lima roxer to Lima, oops, Roxer to Lima, arrival and VOR runway, runway 19 approach.
and we have three miles to the top of descent so I'm going to send this descent and we can have the descent started so I just push on the knob and then the Airbus starts the descent very good it's in managed mode so the Airbus manages the speed and manages our profile good now one thing I still wanted to show we go back to plan mode we zoom in zoom in zoom in what can help us for the approach is actually setting this 7 distance so the racetrack actually on this chart you don't see it but I'm going to just quickly pull up the actual original sp Spanish chart and then if I zoom in enough you can see if the resolution is good enough that it says the racetrack has a maximum speed of 220 knots and for category C it's a one and a half minute outbound track so it means that from the point that you have turned parallel with the inbound track so you are on the 014 track outbound you have to fly at least one and a half minutes or until you are at the 7 DME so you have to take the one which happens first so either you have after one and a half minutes you turn or when you reach 7 DME you start turning okay so this is not on the Navigraph chart but this is on the real life chart okay uh, let's zoom out go back for our charts okay and what I still quickly wanted to show we are on profile our speed is fine what I quickly wanted to show is the following so this goes back to plan mode that's good we go to flight plan we go to Vigo and actually anywhere you can go and select fix info now fix info means you can draw things on the, the display just as reference and I want to draw actually a circle that corresponds to this seven uh, seven mile radius from the VOR so when we cross that we know that latest there we have to make our turn to the right so the reference for this is going to be the Victor Golf uh, Victor Golf Oscar VOR and the closest one not something 4000 miles away and the radius is 7 miles 7 miles and then we can go back and now what you can see is that it indeed drew a 7 mile radius circle here so the green one is a 7 mile radius circle this is really just for visual reference not really going to use it because we are going to read off the VOR distance from our display anyway but this is a possibility you can do okay this should go back to progress again sir on the on the, the the decent path and our speed is still also good one more thing I will quickly change in the flight plan is that I would like to be at the Vigo VOR okay the speed is already at 205 that's good because that's under the the maximum allowed 220 good that's good uh, we are back to arc mode and we can zoom back out so we see more okay, we are still far okay just a quick look at our checklist for the descent the cruise was prepared the only thing we didn't do is we didn't enter the decent winds so also for a better calculation you can enter the wind data and now we are too far for uh, uh, requesting it uh, return where are we flight plan okay and here wind okay it's a bit weird ah yeah 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 we are too we should have done that so you have to put in the winds for the calculation before the top of descent we didn't do that doesn't make uh, anything incorrect the only thing it means that our fuel calculation and time calculations are not exactly precise because now it's using the the wind that was at cruise to calculate all these values no worries normally you would do it when you prepare the descent I was walk, uh, talking a lot so we didn't do it happens uh, not on the real plane I hope but in the simulator definitely okay go back to the progress page and what we were going to do is quick look at the checklist so we have prepared the descent 
It's a not too short runway, so we'll be only using an auto brake at the low setting. QNH was 1012, so that's in our mind for the setting when we cross the transition flight level. Fuel prediction, uh, fuel prediction page was set. In check, we'll do a full flap landing, so we'll not have to set anything there. Then we don't require anti ice because again the clouds are quite low so the temperature shouldn't be an issue there icing conditions will not be relevant or present okay good so we are descending to 5000 slowly so we are still far out so you can see that the VOR is still almost 80 miles from here so the descent is prepared the radar is on I don't think we need the weather radar because the weather seems to be fine. So the next item will be at 10,000. We turn off the turn on the landing lights and uh, ask people to get back to their seats by turning on the seatbelt signs. And a quick look to Webeye. There is still no arrivals to Vigo and there is no air traffic control, so we will not have to bother with that. Unfortunately, it was really nice on the last flight with the bus when we had uh, air traffic control to London. We were vectored to the ILS. It was really nice. It's, it's much nicer to fly if it's much more realistic if there is air traffic control. Of course, for such a pilot skill tour where you have to make a lot of, uh, you have to pay a lot of attention to the approach itself, and it's not just an ILS. I'm not complaining that I don't have to do the the radio phony also. But just saying that in general, it's much nicer if there is radio communications. Okay, let's have a quick look outside. The coast is not visible anymore, it's 940 miles to the east. Alright, how are we doing? Flight level 2100, sorry, 210. 2100 would be very high, so 210. Okay, uh, a quick repetition of the altitudes. We'll start at 5000, from 5000 I'm going to make some quick notes on that for me, so I don't have to always look at the map. Start at 5000, an immediate right turn to track uh, 014, if I remember correctly, track 014, then descent to 3900, 3900, then after BOR distance 7, turn inbound uh, 194, inbound 194, radial descent to 3600, then after uh, 6.2 miles, here you can see 6.2 miles from the Vigo VOR, you can continue the descent to 2500 and then descend after overhead the VOR to yeah, basically the altitude of the airport and there the track will be 195 okay Steph is asking what checklist I use. I actually have my own checklist which I've made from the, the documentation of the TOLIS and I've extended it with a few tricks which uh, is from a stream of uh, another real world pilot. I might upload it and then make a link in the, the video so you guys can also download it. And the, the, the streamer who I really like, uh, who is also a real life uh, pilot, is a uh, just have a quick check. I think the streamer is called A320 Pilot. Oh no, no, uh, he's called 
320 sim pilot, but I will try to link to his uh, channel too. So he's a quite new YouTuber, but I really like his style because he is very much concentrated on the procedures and not the very fancy stream things. So he's called the 320 sim pilot. And for the checklist I make a note for myself to make that available somewhere. I will link it to the description of the stream afterwards. Alright. We're soon arriving to the clouds, it's still quite cold. I will just for safety put on the engine anti-ice for the decent. Should be fine in any case. Okay, we can zoom in further. And then one thing we still have to do is setting the frequencies. So we are going to use indeed the Vigo VOR and the course is 194, that's correct. And we'll hard tune that. So no, now these are auto tuned, which are with a small letter and hard tuned are the ones that are with large letters. So now I will hard tune that 113 decimal 6 113 decimal 6 click here it hard tunes it makes sure it's going to be that frequency and the flight computer is not going to tune that away now you can here see that with these switches you can put actually the VOR on the display so the VOR is now 43 miles away from us and this is the normal arc, arc screen you can also fly in nav mode, uh, it's not really a mode, it's just a setting for the screen, or VOR or LS4 ILS. Now, when you switch this, switch to VOR, then you basically have a VOR instrument here, just like in any small plane a VOR instrument would be. So the white uh, arrow points to the VOR, here you can see this is the VOR. If I would tune in another VOR or an ADF, then you could put that also on this screen. It's uh, thundering here outside with lightning, so I hope everything's going to be fine and we are not going to get uh, power surges. So if the stream suddenly disappears, you know that my computer died, but I hope it's not going to happen. So this is a normal VOR instrument. This arrow, the white arrow, points to the VOR, and the blue is really the radial that's tuned in, so that's the 194, you can see 180 is here, 190 is here, 195 would be this, and that's just a tick to the left, so 194, so that's the course that's set, and this shows this uh, deviating part of the blue that we are flying left of that uh, VOR radial. So when we make our inbound turn after we fly the outward track of the racetrack because we'll fly here we'll not fly along the inbound 194 to start with we'll start the approach overhead the VOR so when we are overhead the VOR we will turn track 014 then we don't use the VOR uh, the VOR dial in that sense but then after reaching 7 miles from the VOR we will intercept the inbound 194 track to the VOR. So then I will use the instrument. So that's what I meant by flying this basically manually. So actually now I don't even have to go back to the arch mode anymore or wouldn't have to. <laughs> you, you can actually see that now that we are getting closer the, the flight computer also have uh, displayed properly the racetrack. In any case I'm not going to use that you will see that I will not fly in uh, managed modes for the heading and the speed. I will fly them in a... Uh, not managed, what's the other word? In select selected mode. So that means that the pilot selects a heading or a speed or a track and he has control over. When it's managed mode with the Airbus, then just the flight computer manages everything and you don't have to do anything. So that's managed mode and then you can take over and then that means you are in selected mode. 
we are about to cross flight level 100 and then we will put on the lights and I'm already going to ask the people to return to their seats and I will already put the landing lights out we are almost at flight level 100, I don't want to forget that uh, the constraints are on the frequencies are set, so that's the only frequency we don't we need. We don't need anything else. So we can go back to performance. And when we are passing the transition altitude is 6000, so when we are getting down to somewhere above 6000, by the time we cross 6000, we will set the local Q and H which is still 1012, yes, still 1012. The wind changed a bit, so now it's less than the landing is going to be a bit easier. But now it's a bit more from the tailwind direction, but it's not too strong, so we can still land uh, runway 19er, no issues with that. Okay, and QNH is 1012. We are coming in here, you can see, already quite close. So this is 10 miles from the VOR, and when you go to the other, then you see the, I, uh, the 8 mile DME arch, so 10 miles will be here, you will see that we come in here, and then when we are overhead, we will switch modes, and then from there on, things will go manually. Okay, it's already 14 degrees outside, so we will not need the anti-ice. I'm already going to go to VOR mode and zoom in a bit, that's only for the Terran. So in VOR mode you cannot see your flight plan, in NAV mode you can see your flight plan. Because NAV mode is uh, it's different. Alright, but we know that when we are zero uh, from Vigo, then we will want to make our turn to the right. And our speed is by the time should be 205 because that's still mid managed mode, and you can see that we'll reach uh, and this altitude doesn't match here, so I will do that maybe already in selected mode also manually. Just a quick look to WebEye that there is no traffic in Vigo, there is an outbound who is boarding. Let's hope they are going to wait for us. So maybe a quick uh, message uh, to say what we are doing. We are ten and then from B G O. Flight level 70, uh, expecting VOR, VOR runway 19 approach. Now they know what we want to do. Okay. I'm going to go to manage speed mode and set the speed to 205. That's a good speed for making the racetrack. It's also below the maximum allowed speed, so that's fine. And we are continuing our descent to 5000. And when we are like 3 miles from the VOR, then I will take over and go to track mode. I can already actually go to track flight path angle, so you see that when you click this, then you go from vertical speed and heading to track and flight path angle. And also here, you have a different symbol. They call this the bird. So the bird actually shows the direction you are flying to. Okay. I will actually leave this up here and maybe also put this up. They are better visible in the stream because this is actually the most important part for now. You see that we are already within the arch, we are coming to 5000 feet, uh, QNH should go to local, that's 1012, local also the standby is there. 
and we are just above the clouds so this is going to be interesting okay we are three miles so I'm going to take over the direction now we are in speed flight path angle and track mode I have to do everything on the the autopilot the flight computer is not doing the route calculations anymore so the first thing will be when we are here reaching zero then we will turn our track to zero one four zero one four and we will also start descending so we are 1.5 1.4 we can also put down one notch of flaps because we are already at a good speed for that I'm also going to slow down a bit more 109.5 now we are at 0 0.7 from the VOR the VOR, we just passed the VOR so now we go to right turn to 0 0.14 outboard track 0 0.14 not going to be the same path here because this path the difference between the inbound and the outbound depends on what speed you are flying with so this is not to scale here anymore but it's going to be very similar because we are not flying that fast anymore but it doesn't matter that we are not going to be horizontally at the same distance okay we also ha can descend to 3900 feet so I set 3900 feet and say we can do a flight path angle of 3 doesn't really matter and then this goes to flight path angle minus 3 and you can see that we are descending to 3900 feet okay very good you can also slow down more but now since we slow down the inbound right turn will have to be slower because when you are slower you turn faster so if you want to intercept the VOR then the turn inbound will have to be a bit less fast so we'll straighten out a bit before we start to turn now we can slow down to 175 and you can see that since we are descending we are not really slowing down because the engine is already on idle uh, engine is on idle so we have to use some speed brakes I'm just gonna throw out the speed brakes till, till we slow down actually our approach mode has already activated so I could go away from manage speed uh, sorry from select speed to manage speed and then the plane would adjust the speed by itself according to the flap settings I use I will already actually do that uh, okay and now speed make break uh, we are at 175 perfect so the next action item will be now you can see that we are getting further from the VOR the VOR direction is here so the VOR is getting more and more behind us and when we are at 7 we will make the turn I should have started the chrono also when we started the track outwards because the rule is that either when you are flying outwards for one and a half minute or when you are flying outwards for 7 miles then you can start making the turn for a moment I will switch to arc and then you can see that basically we are almost flying the same thing what he pre-calculated but we are doing this manually and then when we are at 7 we will make our right turn okay I will also go to manage speed and that means that the plane itself will slow down to approach speed as I put out the flaps so at 7 we will turn to the right but we will fly a bit at an angle to the to the radial because now we'll turn faster okay so we go 90 so 14 plus 90 is 104 104 104 and after words we wait a tiny bit and then we turn further we will have to turn to intercept the radial and now you see that the the VOR is almost to the direction as our so this is the upper end direction and this is the course so when the VOR direction is the same as the course then you are intercepting now we'll just straighten up a tiny bit and then we do a 45 degree intercept so I will fly to 149 149er and there we'll intercept so now turn 149er and from there we can nicely intercept and then we are again at 7 we can start going down to 3600 feet so I will already put that in 3600 but not yet activate a flight path there 
we are already at approach speed so we are nicely configured you can see that the radial deviation uh, the, the deviation on the VOR instrument is coming closer so we can start turning to 194 so that's the inbound track and you can see that by the time we turn we are going to be exactly on the radial so when this blue aligns with the the middle okay we are a bit farther stop and we can here adjust a bit so now we are still a tiny bit off from the track we are within we can descend again another flight flight angle of three uh, we are correcting so we are getting closer the blue thing is getting a bit closer nicely slowly and now we can descend to 2500 because we are within so we can descend to 2500 okay let's go a bit faster we put the gears also down and flaps go full lights on tell the cabin and then now we can track 194 because we have basically intercepted the radial and the next action item will be at when we are overhead the VOR then we will change the track to 195 and we start a minus 3.3 .3 flight height angle descent downwards. I will have no time, but normally we we'll check these ultimate altitudes with the distance. Maybe if we have time, we'll do it. So we are now three miles. We are descending to 3,000. We need to be at 2,500 when we are overhead the VOR. So that's going to be met. Nice. There is so far no runway in sight, and we have to have the runway in sight latest at 1800 feet because if you don't we have to go around so let's hope that's going to happen we are now two miles we are almost leveling off at 2500 and we can start our further approach when we are just passing the VOR you will see how we pass the VOR because the the dial pointing to the VOR okay very good we are almost below the clouds so this dial the white dial will flip around that means that you are past the VOR and there we'll start descending so the initial descent is 2800 because that's the go around altitude and now we will do a flight path angle of 3.3 and just when the dial rotates we start the descent with a 3.3 angle 2800 okay we can start it the track goes to 195 and the spoilers armed brake is set gears three green down I will put these away and uh, we are looking out for the runway and I see the runway in the distance ooh yeah here into the left we are a bit high but the runway is inside okay good let me just quickly say on final uh, no we are not gonna have time for that anymore so I disengage the autopilot from here we fly manually and we line up with the runway okay two reds two whites and then uh, the flight director goes off and the flight path angle still shows us which uh, degree we are descending so this should be at minus 3.3 so this is minus 5 then we are more or less minus 3.3 we are exactly on the path where we should be but we are not yet aligned with the center line we are aligning with the center line okay on the center line our descent rate is good two red two white should go a bit lower a bit to the right there is a bit of wind and seems to be a bit of turbulence to do sorry terrain 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 pull to the left pull up pull up terrain 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 Terrain, 
Alright. Re reversers. Into the center line. Eighty knots. Sixty knots. Reverse idle. Then crossing for the knots. I have control over the brakes. Now we are just going to exit the runway at Charlie Three to the right. Quite an okay landing, a bit early flare. But there was a lot of turbulence on final. It was difficult to get stabilized. I'm also using an add-on which uh, injects thermals into the weather system. Because I find it very non-realistic uh, that when you use real-life weather, weather in X-Plane, then you never have thermals. So this is a bit of an issue, if for, exam for example if you want to fly with gliders, then you really need thermals. And I also, especially like compared to my real life flight training, which is with a small plane of course, so I really missed that small turbulence in hot weather where like the, the atmosphere is boiling. So there is this nice add-on which is called Thermal X or X Thermals, I will link that also in the description, I don't forget. Okay, let's stop here for a second and do an after landing checklist. So with that add-on I can inject thermals even if it's real life weather. I can actually show that quickly. It's called the uh, Therm X. And now you can see that there was actually uh, thermals with a thermal rate of 700 feet per minute uh, upwards. So it means that if on the final path if you fly into a thermal then suddenly, instead of going down with 1300 feet per minute, which is more or less this 3.3 uh, degree flight path angle, then you are suddenly going down half that, because you have 700 feet per minute airflow coming up in a thermal. So that means you have to really fight with a stick and correct in all the time. And of course then you are correcting, then you exit the thermal, and then suddenly you are going down too fast. So that's why how thermals make it much more realistic and this is a really nice plugin because it works with real uh, real uh, world weather in explain and it really calculates thermals precisely according to the the atmospheric conditions so some days you have more thermals some days you have less it's quite well matching uh, the real life situation because it's done by people who are flying gliders and they made properly uh, physical calculations okay let's uh, stop talking about this after landing checklist they have uh, left the the active runway and uh, I'm looking for my checklist points after landing, landing lights off and retracted uh, strobe lights on auto and of course when we have uh, parked and uh, logged off the network I will show the replay for the landing the ground spoilers go disarmed the mode selector is normal, we didn't put that otherwise. The transponder goes to exponder. So the 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 TCAS is not active anymore. Flaps go retracted. And then we start the APU. So that we have power when we are at the gate and we turn off the engines. Okay, the APU is started. The brake temperatures, have a quick look at the brake temperatures. Uh, break, 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 break. Are not yet in the yellow, but they will still probably rise because there is some thermal uh, time it takes for the brake temperature to rise after there is heat dissipating there from the brake pads. So I can stop the chrono and we'll start the chrono again because normally for the brake fans to go on you need to wait some time. It's five minutes, we are not going to wait that long now. We'll start them as soon as there is need for them. Okay, we can taxi to the gate. We will taxi to the gate we like here next to the Air Europe. Let's have a look quickly outside. Okay, we will taxi to the gate just before the other plane. 
And then we will do the securing the aircraft checklist. And I have to wait 6 minutes at least before disconnecting from IVO so I can submit this flight to the tour. But after then we will have a nice look at the replay and you can see how I floated the plane. It's difficult when I fly with the A319 and the other days I fly with the A321. It's really different how you flare them. Anyway, not looking for excuses, the landing was still good landing. No need for that. Okay, soon we'll make a turn to the left. It's the standard scenery, unfortunately, so there is no marshallers or auto gate. Okay, turn to the left. Line up nicely with the parking. Left. Have a look from outside. Because without marshallers you cannot do this from inside. It's also in real life it's impossible to see the center line afterwards. And we are going to stop at the A319 sign nicely. Okay, brakes on. Parking brakes on, good. Then the fans can go on, now you can see that the temperature is just at 300, so that's the limit. But we are only using low brakes and at the end I didn't have to manually brake much, so that's normal. In an, uh, but you should not be taking off before the temperature is below 150, so should this be a turn around you would have to wait until the temperature goes a bit lower. Now we can turn off the the aid tiers. We don't need navigation anymore. All exterior lights. Oh, sorry, we are in the parking. Parking brake is set. Anti ice is not on. APU bleed is off, so that's okay. The APU is running. Just a quick check. APU is running right. APU is available. Good. Start APU, okay, APU bleed gone, goes on. Don't need to be that cold anymore. Engine master switches can go off, APU bleed is on, so we have power from the APU. And then engine one off. We're out, pulling down. And engine two off. Spooling down. And when they stopped running, so spinning, then you can turn off the bacon lines, lights, sorry. That's more or less now, so first the runway turn off, lights off, those lights off, and the beacon lights go off, strobe lights still can stay out, and nav lights can still stay. Seatbelt signs go off, so welcome to Vigo, thank you for flying with Iberia. And the elapsed time counter can be stopped, so it was block to block, 1 hour 15, 16 minutes. That's just on the planning, I think. And the fuel pumps can go off, so we have 6 fuel pumps here, not 4 like on the A321. Strand transponder goes to standby. And then you can dim your display units. I'm not going to do that. Well, we can do that because we still have to wait a few minutes here. So now it's uh, local time for 3. I have to wait here till local time for, for uh, 9. So that's, that's the 6 minutes. In the meantime, if there is any question still about the flight on the stream, then it's a good time to ask because now we have to wait a tiny bit before we look at the replays. Otherwise, thank you already for joining, and I hope it was an interesting approach with this VR approach and flying things without in being in automated modes, using some more advanced controls for the Airbus. Also, something we forgot to do is the go-around altitude was not set when we started the approach. So that's a bit of a small mistake, but now if I open up the map, 
and you can see nicely that we came in, we flew the race track and then we landed. And here you can see that the initial turn was much steeper than the first, the last two turns, and that's because here we were faster. Then later we were slower, so you turn faster when you're slower, and that's why we first turned 90 degrees, then did a 45 degree intercept to the radial, and then we were flying inbound on the radial, and then proceeded, took over manually and landed. That's nice, you can also check that back on the map. And we didn't fly the arc because we didn't use Birmi as an initial approach fix, but we used Vigo as an initial approach fix. That's we came in from 45 degree basically, did the outward track inward, and then and we have uh, taken into consideration all the altitude constraints that there are for the approach. So I can say that we did the approach quite well. I'm satisfied. And now we are just waiting another 3 minutes before I can disconnect and we can have a view at the replay. At the meantime somebody else is getting ready here for departure, another Air Europe plane. Uh, thanks Steph, I am happy that you enjoyed the, the stream and hope to see you again the next time. I will probably fly, not sure about this week because I have actually two flight trainings this week at uh, Charleroi so I'm a bit uh, already planned in but latest next, wi next week we'll go further with the, the pilot, pilot skill tour and actually the pilot skill tour is nice in the sense that it's not always with a large plane and it's some so it's sometimes required to fly with a GA plane and uh, do visual flying you'll see that later on for different stages, there are different requirements and rules. So it's, I think it's a very nice uh, tour. Looking forward to flying all the other approaches. So I hope uh, it's going to be interesting for the, the viewers too. And I again, I will even when we are flying with a bigger plane, I will always try to use the more advanced modes of the Airbus, not just program in the approach to the flight computer and let the plane fly it, because then it's not a pilot skill tour. I think like this, at least doing all these manually, doing the VOR approach with just looking at the VOR instrument, it's much more interesting because you, you see what's happening, not so automated. But these are the, the things which are actually explained also by this uh, 320 sim pilot guy, I, that's why I like his channel, that's why I recommend his channel. Okay, we need to still wait a bit of time before I disconnect, but we are almost there, so <laughs> almost ready to show the, the replay of the landing. Just uh, like one more minute and then we can disconnect. The next, I can just quickly have a look what's going to be the next stage for the next flight. Uh, while we wait this one minute to pass. And the next stage of the pilot skill tour will be flights from Vigo, so we always continue where we stopped. From Vigo to Salamanca. So that's going to be still flight with a, with a larger plane, so I will probably fly it with the, the A319 again. Uh, 1 hour 15 minute flight time, so similar. And we will have to do a flight where initially we fly, so it's going to be a flight on Epsilon. So initially an IFR flight and then we'll change to VFR for the approach. So it will be a fully visual approach. Oh nice, I've never done that on the, the network. Okay, we have waited enough time, so I'm going to disconnect. Uh, yes, I cannot click on every tab. Yes, disconnected. So we are disconnected. And we can have a look at the replay now. So, for safety, I always pause first. You can see that the landing was still said to be a great landing, not too much uh, bump, 1.07 G, and less than 250 FPM, which is good. Actually, between 150 and 250 is the best. When you are smoother with a larger plane, it's not really good for the tires. So, butter landings are great for the stream, but they are not that great for the plane, of course.
Uh, okay, so then the replay is on to replay and where was the approach? A bit further back. Oh, a bit more further back. Okay. Now let's have a look. Here I'm really fighting with the turbulence, that's what I explained. There was a lot of up and down change in the airflow thanks to this extra add-on I'm using with the thermals. Too red, too white all the time, so that's good. And a bit too early flare, but the landing firm, but good. Let's have a look from another angle. I pressed the wrong button, of course. Okay. Ali, sorry. Uh, yeah. a very scenic uh, area. You can still see that there is a lot of correction necessary. There is a bit of wind coming, a bit of turbulence. Also in real life there is probably quite some turbulence just because the airport is on the side of a hill and depending on how the wind direction is. the last one from the threshold. You can see I'm still flying a bit to the left here on the screen to align with the center line. There's a bit of crosswind.
that was it. Thanks a lot for joining. And as I said, uh, latest next week we are continuing with the tour. Until then, fly safe and maybe we'll see each other on the network. Thanks for joining and bye bye.